I've always been someone who enjoys a good roster change. I've always enjoyed seeing player and team dynamics change and watching really storylines start to form. And this first roster change period definitely shaked up the rest of the Pro League. It came as a shock in terms of what organizations were allowed to do and what they did with the power that they were given. And so much power that was given led up to seven out of the 16 teams in the CWL Pro League and heading into Fort Worth making changes. And today I'm going to rank those changes, rank them based on what the change or what change rather was made. So this isn't, this isn't necessarily ranking teams in terms of how they'll place or how well they're going to play at CWL Fort Worth, but pretty much giving a background on how I feel the, cha the change has impacted the team. And so far in, in previous roster changes is, is pretty much how I'm evaluating this. So how they looked prior to the roster change and how they're looking now, not necessarily, like I said, based off of their possible placement when it comes down to Fort Worth. So starting off with number seven, we've got Midnight. Yes, Midnight Esports. Let's keep in mind how incredible this team looked. I have to say, I'm absolutely furious. I was a huge fan of this team coming into the POQ, even before the POQ, when this group originally formed. I was super excited to see how these guys were going to play and to see exactly how the Cinderella story would continue heading into their first official major land together. Uh, I had, like I said, super high expectations when this team originally formed. I really thought they had the capability to be in that top four discussion based on the way that they were maneuvering throughout the maps based on how they were slaying and kind of having that that combination of teamwork that we don't see very often it's almost like you could probably count on your hand how many times that we've seen a young group of players start to kind of see a ton of success and start to compete with some of the best players in the world considering that maybe a lot of these names weren't really known that well so from a five and two record a team that's really starting to, to kind of fix their faults over time in the pro league to a group of players who aren't bad but it's a pickup team right it's a total pickup team to say the least like I said, I'm not a fan of this change, and for me, I was a big advocate of that original five to go for, in my opinion, probably a guaranteed top four team to a roster who still is going to have to kind of work on chemistry, a totally different group excluding one player. I'm just not a fan of the change, obviously, and the way that it was, of course, done. So let's move on to number six. We've got Evil Geniuses. They essentially released Vicento for Attach, who's on loan from FaZe Clan. Now, I will say, overall, I'm happy to see that EG makes a change, right? I'm excited to see that they made a change, but I feel like they needed more, right? I think they definitely needed more changes rather than just a one-for-one -one player type swap. Now, I'm hoping this change will allow for role changes. I think with the Hatch coming into this team, running a Maddox, I, I think that it, as, in terms of his role, it will stay the same, but I'm thinking that we could also possibly see uh, Felony kind of switch over to possibly a Sog, which I think would honestly be best for the roster. But this team was one series away and really an odd series away versus reciprocity to a 0 and seven record. They could have possibly lost every single series. No team has done that in either division. They could have been the only team to go 0 and seven. They lost three to midnight. They lost three to optic gaming. They lost three, one to Genji three, one to UYU and three Oh to Rhett. And you mean to tell me that one player change is all that they needed. They just needed a one player swap and all of that's going to go back to normal. They're going to contend with all the top rosters in the world, considering they lost to a lot of teams who you could argue based on paper might have even gotten a little bit better if you're talking maybe about Genji or especially about UIU. So for me, I almost wish that they would have lost their last game because they would have gone 0-7. All that talk about them possibly improving may or may not have been there as much. And so while I'm obviously not the biggest advocate of the way that this particular roster change was done. I was glad that one was done in the first place, but I think we needed more changes. Simple as that. So let's now move on to number five. We've got reciprocity. Now this one's hard for me to put them at this point because I think in general, having them next to a lot of other uh, groups I've already talked about doesn't necessarily describe the way that I feel about reciprocity because the feeling by no means is the exact same as the previous two because I think the, the decision to bring in Dylan actually adds a total different dynamic to the team. I think he was a super solid player. I think he had, he had looked very, very good, especially in previous lands, and I think he'll come in as a dominant sub player, one that they're going to really need, uh, and I think especially in response, he's going to provide a new life to them to a certain extent because that reciprocity 4-16 and 16 combined record so far throughout the Pro League and in terms of hardpoint and control definitely needs to see some improvements. So I think they add the right piece and coming from rec where they currently are, I think that they're, they probably weren't in a situation to maybe make another change 
Uh, but I think they still should have tried. I think that there still should have been something in there that where they think about making a change. And like I said, these guys are very close, right? We, we talk about their YouTube series that Reciprocity has right now. And obviously the players are close. So they have the chemistry and that, that is not at all unwarranted. I just don't know the ceiling of this team is going to be high enough to break the top four. I, I really don't, even by adding Dylan into the roster. Because this team of reciprocity, when we go back and we look at this 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 group as far as, as, as Black Ops 4 is considered, they looked good at the PLQ, right? They took down Team Sween and FaZe, and everyone was thinking, okay, they're going to probably be a force moving into the Pro League. But this has always been my question. Ever since that, even ever since they entered into the Pro League, and like I said, they had a, a little bit, somewhat of a slow start versus Red, my question ever since the roster was announced, who are the Slayers, right? Who are we looking toward? Who can who can we rely on for that sudden burst? For that, like, who are we looking at on this team to totally make a change? Like, whenever you need someone to turn up, a lot of the top four teams right now have that player. Like, they know in their mind, and that player even knows themselves, hey, I have to be the player to turn things around. I'm the guy who does that. On this team of reciprocity, I don't know who does that. I really don't. Besides Dylan now, you could throw in guys like Tommy, Wuskin from time to time, Zed, etc., there is just not one in particular player who I look at on this team, at least a few, where I think that, yeah, they know what their role is and they know they have to totally kind of change the, the entire team morale around. Um, and when I speak on more changes should be made, I also could be wrong, but when I speak on their only win of control comes by a 3-2 victory. When I say their 5-7 five, uh, their five and seven record in Search and Destroy, their wins come by ways of two 6-4 victories and three 6-5s. And when you're also 2 of 3 in Hardpoint wins, and they also come from 250 to 230 and a 250-240 to 240 victory, there are maybe a few situations, a few gunfights that go a different way, and that record maybe is even on par with EG. Like, we're, we're talking about a totally different team right here, is if they lose maybe a few of those hard points, if a few of those search and destroys, which most of them went 6-4, 6-5, they lose a few rounds, totally different story as well. And not that I wish that they would have lost those, but I think I think that having that those close games possibly require another change to be made. Now, let's go ahead and move on quickly, right, to number four. We've got Accelerate. Now, I saw many people rating this change very high, and I must say, I get where they're coming from, right? A 1-12 in record in Hardpoint, totally understand that. Absolutely get that point of view. But there is something to be said when it comes down to young teams and chemistry. Sometimes you just have a group of players and they just click, more specifically talking about Midnight. When you separate them, that same knowledge sometimes isn't just there. That that player that you have been used to playing with, that, that guy who has a perfect role set in mind for how you play your game, it changes things up. We talked about a, a number of different rosters that have done this in the past. Not that they don't see success, but they're by no means the same team whenever they lose those pieces over time. And we have Brack and Jet Lee coming over from Midnight. You have, like I said, Skies coming over from UI. You, you just have a totally different type of mentality when it comes down to this particular roster. So for me, is this EXG team better than the previous? I would argue, at least on paper, it definitely, definitely looks as if it will be. But I think that's somewhat of a given. I think you put all these players on different teams and you bring them together, that just that morale isn't going to be there. Now, I think one thing that could definitely kind of bring this roster together uh, is the factor that a lot of them necessarily weren't expected to be in the Pro League, right? A lot of these guys were kind of on the back burner. I mean, what, the, the midnight decision came down to the final, uh, kind of like the, the final stretch, essentially. We talked about the um, you know, the EXG guys as well, pretty much in the same situation. Skies didn't really know what was happening with him either. So for me, is I think this team is an upgrade, but by no means do I see this team immediately as a contender by any stretch of the imagination. I think they have a lot of work to do, and for me, that starts by working together with a whole new crew. So I think this team is much better than the previous. It's just I don't know how these guys are now going to work, considering the places that they came from now coming together. It just seems kind of a ragtag group to an extent, even though there is a lot of talent on this group. I just don't know how they're going to play together, and I don't think that they know how they're going to play together either. Now let's move on quick to number three. We've got Enigma 6. Essentially, they trade out Cade for Chino. And for me, this trade makes total sense from a number of different perspectives, most primarily based off of chemistry, right? You talk about that standpoint. Players like Chino have already played with Diabolic in the past. He's already worked with Coach Sender many times, pretty much ever since Call of Duty Ghost. They've been somewhat all on the same roster over time. So from a chemistry point of view, 
this change absolutely makes sense. Unlike a lot of other ones out there, this change totally makes sense when it comes down to the teamwork side of things. And I also think that E6 was looking forward when it came down to this change to possibly the meta that could also be changing when it comes down to uh, CWL Fort Worth. A lot of talk has been kind of brought up on how the ICRs are going to play, how the Maddoxes are going to play, how the SOG still as influential as they previously were. So with all of that kind of being spread out there, they go for an AR player, and more specifically an ICR player in Chino. So for me... I think this is going to totally free up General to possibly play a little bit more aggressive than he has in the past, which I think is also good that they have that potential for freedom because obviously we've been talking about throughout a lot of the years up to this point. There's maybe like, what, one or two ICRs that kind of lead the team, uh, especially as far as pro league rosters, more specifically talking about like what, like Gen G and E United, just to name two of them. So um, I think if we can start to see more of a consistent performance from the ICR, if we possibly even see General kind of move forward, we talk about General, Kismet, Frosty on the same team with even a support of Diabolic and a Chino who I think is more confident and works really well uh, when it comes down to situations where he's comfortable. We talk about uh, TK right before the arguments of World War II. DT and Black Ops 3. Noble Vanquish and Ghost. His best lineups have been where he feels the most comfortable and being surrounded by two players that he's been playing with pr pretty much throughout his entire career. One of them being the coach. I think this change makes total sense, and I like this team much more. I think this is a total upgrade for them moving into Fort Worth. Now, number two, I've got Jinji. Now, this is going to come as a shock for many people because I've been seeing a number of different Twitter posts, Reddit threads talk about how this Jinji team, it seems kind of one or the other. It's either people really like this change or they're saying, why was there a change in the first place? Why, after a 6-1 and record, after a 9-0 and search and destroy map count, after two weeks in their division, why were they making roster changes and I will say I have to admit I was shocked by this I really was when I heard the news whenever I was kind of talking with people behind the scenes and they were saying yeah this is a possible change that we could be seeing happen I was shocked I did not think at all that this would be the case um, but I will say after kind of doing a little bit more uh, research it does somewhat make sense especially if there were internal problems already now the biggest thing for me off of this change was was chemistry right how is this team going to do considering that they were very much a search and destroy based team where they relied on angles, they relied on perspectives, they relied on communication because they were outclassing teams like I have never seen before, especially in 5v5 Call of Duty more, more specifically. They were outclassing everyone, and a lot of that comes from chemistry. So if they were already having that problem, which it seems as if that was the case, based off of, like I said, some Reddit posts made by the players, some tweets as well, that doesn't really kind of get involved in the conversation anymore. So if chemistry is out of it, to me, this change makes total sense because keep in mind, Genji are, like I said, by far a search and destroy minded team. But I think that they thought to themselves, how long can we last for? How long can we last on solely being a search and destroy based team? We go back in Call of Duty history. If there ever has been a team who has dominated in search and destroy for a long period of time, and that being their primary game mode and going negative pretty much as far as respawns are kind of combined. Has there been a team that's even lasted for a threat an entire title who has been more specifically good at search and destroy by a mile over everything else? I think they started to realize that. Jinji were 10 and 11 in respawns. And if you were to take away Mox's KD, the rest of the team's combined averages in Harpoint would lead to a 0 0.91. Nobody else other than Mox in Harpoint was in a positive KD. Well, there could be people out there who say, oh, well, they were better control anyway. They were a much better control team. Really? Because if you take away Mox's KD as well in that game mode and you were to average out the rest of everyone's KDs together, they combine out to a 0 0.95 KD. Well, that's higher. But you also have to look and say, okay, well, that 4-3 and three record in control, hey, that's, that's pretty good. However, all four of their wins came by 3-2 victories. In every single one of their control wins, they won by one overtime round. I think Genji realized that they couldn't continue this. They can't continue to remain stable by solely winning search destroys and by narrowly getting through most of their respawns, having a negative record when it comes down to respawns in general, 10 and 11 in the pro league. And also, I think they were starting to kind of realize that decline by week two of Division A when they were narrowly winning a game five versus an everyday improving LG team by winning a narrow game five over Optic Gaming without their best player, and by losing to Midnight 3-1, to one, who at the time wasn't looking as good as they previously were in week one. So I think they realized maybe our luck is starting to run out. Maybe we're starting to run a little bit dry. Maybe a change would be good for us. And like I said, I think this team in Search and Destroy was fantastic, but I think whenever you talk about adding a piece like Envoy, 
if he can work and if they add him in the correct way and, and make sure that the, the chemistry and the communication isn't a problem because he comes from a team where he liked to communicate, he liked to be the one giving direction rather than receiving it. And so I think if they can work that out, if they can work out their biggest hurdle, I think this team absolutely looks so much better uh, in terms of just slaying. And I'm, I'm personally, and in the situation that Jinji was at and looking throughout their stats, I'm willing to make the sacrifice. If, if the chemistry wasn't there, keeping that in mind, but basically, if the chemistry wasn't there, I am absolutely willing to take the chance on maybe getting a little bit worse at search and destroy and possibly raising that in my respawn because that was definitely uh, warranted. That's for sure. So like I said, I don't know if they could base it all on search and destroy and continue moving forward. And I think that they're going to get a huge boost uh, by having uh, guys like, you know, Mox on the map with also being complimented by Envoy. So I think I think that change definitely was needed uh, when you look at what was kind of going on. And lastly, at number one, we've got UYU. They replace Skies with Parzelian, previously of Midnight. And obviously, being at my number one spot, I like this change. This is by far my favorite one that was done because I don't feel as if they even have a chance to decline. I really don't. I don't think that there is any way that you can look at this team up and down and say, Okay, well, this is where they could struggle. The only thing, and I hope that I have started to kind of squash the the talk that was going out there and saying, oh, well, Parzelian and Methods, they can't play on the same team. They run the same role. By the way, Methods has pretty much been running a Maddox throughout the last part of, of his stint in the Pro League. He was pretty much running a Maddox, and for the most part, Skies was as well. They didn't really have a, a designated uh, like ICR player on the team quite a bit. I remember hearing commentators even say, wow, they're not even running a Maddox on, or an ICR on this. They're running two Maddoxes. And it also bring up that Methods currently, uh, in terms of uh, assault rifle play, is top eight in damage per minute, in which he's only surrounded by a few other AR players uh, and is surrounded by guys like Temp, Hook and Ibizi, who are some of the fastest players in the game, Priesta as well. So to say that he's surrounded by some of the fastest players in the game and then to say that he's a way too slow ICR player just doesn't make sense. And we know how talented the Parzillian has been. The way that he provides space for his teammates, especially on midnight, was a key factor in a lot of their success. So UIU, by also acquiring Parzillian, now hold the number two, the number 12, and the number 15 spots in Hardpoint KD in the Pro League. And in terms of control, they hold the number one, the number five, and number uh, 16 spot in terms of control KD as well. So that, for me, is a huge difference maker. They now have a lot more slang potential. You can allow methods to slay freely with the Maddox, which definitely looks as if that's the, the better gun in his hands. I think they feel a lot more comfortable in terms of their role situation as well. Uh, my only issue for me regarding this team could come from their SMGs, but overall this team for me made a perfect fit. I think they made the, the right change. I think this drastically improves the UIU team uh, considering they haven't really lost a whole lot of chemistry by trading out one sole player. So that for me uh, is pretty much where I stand in terms of which roster changes I feel were the best uh, heading into Fort Worth. And like I said, that is not necessarily based on which teams I think will be the best heading into Fort Worth. It's just what roster changes I feel like previously now leaning up into after the roster period has concluded which teams I feel are the best. But do you have a different list? Feel free to let us know on Twitter by using the hashtag, hashtag the Sports Dispatch and let your voice be heard.